So I'm here with Stanford Biggers, who is Sculpture Center's current artist in residence, and uh, he is working on his installation for an exhibition titled Cosmic Voodoo Circus that will open in 10 days. So um, lots of work is happening. And to start somewhere, let's start with the video. Mm -hmm. So as part of this show, um, we'll be showing for the first time the video Shake, which is the second in a trilogy. Um, and it opens with this figure coming out of the ocean in Salvador San Bahia in Brazil. Um, and he goes through the city and has some rather surreal experiences and eventually sort of returns to the sea in this sort of androgynous and kind of glamorous figure, actually. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit about how the video relates to the trilogy and then how you see it relate to the, you know, as an installation. Yeah, so uh, the video as a trilogy, um, I imagine ultimately there being three parts, two parts at this point have been done. The first part was called Shuffle, which was filmed in Stuttgart, Germany. And the main character is Ricardo. Ricardo is a Brazilian expat. He's been living in Germany for over 20 years, uh, which is not so important for the sake of the film, but that is how I met him on a bus one day in Stuttgart and became interested in him and how he navigated and matriculated through German society, uh, being you know, brown with dreadlocks down to his waist, and how he arrived 20 years prior in this very racist climate to where 25 years later he has a family and four kids and he's part of that society. And the video, the action of the video really starts with he as a young boy on riding the train, putting on clown makeup. In the first video. In the first video. Um, so he starts as a young man, then he grows up to uh, becoming a mature male, putting this makeup on, taking it off, and basically figuring out his identity through wearing the mask and taking the mask off, which is a larger metaphor for what everyone does at some point in society, putting the mask on, taking the mask off. Where we pick up the action here for Shake, um, he's gone through that first initial identity crisis, and now he's landed up landed in Brazil, which we don't necessarily know as Brazil, but definitely a very different climate than where it started. And he emerges from the ocean, traverses the city, all along the way picking up different clues on what the next phase of his metaphor, more metamorphosis may be. So that includes uh, a run-in with a drag queen who gives him an outfit, a meeting with uh, a woman who is basically sort of like a bruja or uh, is a medium who talks and, make, and sing songs to different deities in Orisha. Um, and they give him a little bit of information each step of the way. And finally, he returns to the ocean where he basically, I think, basks in his own glory. The third phase will be optimally filmed in West Africa. So it will be going from Europe to Brazil to Africa, which also has historical implications as well. That final trade route Trade routes, and trade routes for exactly. particular kinds of trade. Yeah, human trade, basically. Uh -huh. um, but also African diaspora trade, religious trade. Yeah. It goes on and on. Mm -hmm. And that piece will be called Shatter. So it'll be Shuffle, Shake, and Shatter. Let's talk a little bit about the, like in this particular installation, you've, just in the title alone, you're referencing voodoo and the circus. And I think that you brought up the masks and the clowns, and I think that's an image that, that or a, a character that, that comes up in your work that you're interested in. And voodoo as a sort of syncretic belief system also um, seems to have reappear in your work periodically. And it actually seems to be really taking a certain way at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> um, so maybe you could talk a little bit about how the, like, what interests you about voodoo and, and the mask and what you started to allude to just now. I'm glad you asked that because it's really important to make some differentiations. Mm -hmm. um, I have a lot of respect for the religions that have derived from Yoruba and the Dahomey peoples of Africa, which is technically referred to as Vodou. Yeah. And that is the religious and spiritual form that I do have some, you know, do have respect and knowledge about. Mm -hmm. I chose to use Voodoo, which is very much a Hollywood, American, Western um, appropriation and association to the very real practice of Vodou. Mm -hmm. um, and voodoo is what you've all seen as the walking dead and the zombies that suck your life away and these crazy rituals. Freaking dolls. Yeah, and the dolls and so on. So it's definitely 
sort of um, poking fun at that notion of oversimplification and popularization of an otherwise sacred form. Yeah. Uh, the circus I allude to in here, um, am I supposed to be talking about the circus yet? Or sure. Are we still talking about? Yeah. Uh, the circus, um, there are some direct references to what we know as the circus, but I'm thinking more metaphorically as the circus as an amalgamation of spectacle and um, euphoria and fear and um, surprise. Mm -hmm. um, and the cosmos, cosmic food circus, the cosmos as also being the sort of infinite, um, well, the universe and everything that's included in it. So although you could take any one of those three words and find associations to the show, the idea by putting them to all together really sort of makes it fold in on itself becoming extremely specific, but also extremely general. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's uh, one of the things that happens in a Bodum altar, is that you have all these disparate objects, um, maybe a bottle of rum, a dollar bill, and a Barbie doll, and you put all those things together, and all of a sudden they create a, th you know, a different meaning, mm -hmm. uh, a syncretic meaning. Mm -hmm. And I want the show to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. The use of the mask, I already mentioned that in terms of social navigation and matriculation, but also I think of it as the duality of humans. Um, there's the good, there's the bad, there's the male, there's the female. Um, it starts to deal with you know, duality. So I've been going back and forth with the mask, as well as the smile, which you'll see here in this show as well. And the smile also, um, as with any clown smile, there's always the sense that there's something a little bit more sinister behind that ever-present grin. And I've used the smile for many years now, at first to draw attention to the notion and the history of blackface minstrelsy, but then to subvert that and also reference the Cheshire Cat, um, which is appearing and disappearing, and how minstrelsy appears and disappears in American culture, at least, and the duality of good, bad, you know, happiness, sadness. Um, yeah. And, and would you say, because I, I feel like that the way that this, like the circus becomes like a way of choreographing the structure of this yes. installation. And that, you know, in the sense that there's spectacle, multiple things happen and your attention gets diverted. And, and that that's used kind of strategically to both reveal and expose when you want to. <laughs> um, and the, I guess I was gonna, I was gonna bring up Cheshire and this smile because it's, it comes up a lot and it has these sort of dual references in your work. Um, and it's going to be cast in a particularly dramatic role here, I think. <laughs> um, but it also, I guess um, it's a very powerful symbol and icon in a way that, you, that you know, even the way you're using it has already kind of been unmoored a little bit so that it's not completely stable. But um, the when you, you, I've always been, um, interested in your work and the way that you take these really powerful symbols and you kind of um, shift them or deploy them in a way that sometimes can kind of, by taking them out of that, the very specificity, it can kind of abstract them and depoliticize them a little bit. Um, but you're not a, you know, your work is far from apolitical. So I guess um, the question there is kind of like, how do you want your work to function politically? I think like, duality, yeah, I, I think I duality do. is also part of that. I mean, I am very much looking at the symbols as a sculptural medium, malleable, every, you know. To be able to use the exact same symbol in three or four different contexts and derive a different meaning mm -hmm. makes that a malleable medium to me. And that's exactly the challenge and the test that I'm trying to do by, re, you know, using these as reoccurring themes. Mm -hmm. I do think the circus ends up being a good playground testing ground for that notion. Once again, the smile, it's part of the fun house. Yeah. And if you think about, about the fun house and the carnival within each of us, you know, it's a place where I think the libido and the id and the ego are constantly at battle sometimes in cohesion and coordination with each other and other times in total uh, at ends. And so, um, as far as politics in my work, it's the same thing. Sometimes I make a statement that is very triggered by a specific event and addressing certain politics. But the minute I do that, I want to subvert that to get past it. I don't want it to get stuck 
in the pathology that happens from ever-present politics. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to find ways to take that that content and then flip it back and see if I can find a converse, mm -hmm. you know, or an opposite, and seeing if that can still maintain my political and thematic conceptual interest, but also aesthetic interest as well. Mm -hmm.